Okay, hello everyone and welcome to uh, this morning's class. We'll pray and then we'll continue. Uh, we'll talk about the supernatural and how to really flow in it. So um, uh, let me begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that uh, Lord, uh, you have filled us with your love and your power. Um, as your disciples, Lord, we pray that uh, Lord in everything um, that we do, that our life example will be uh, according to uh, the fullness, Lord, of uh, what we are meant to walk in. So, Father, I just pray that uh, each of us, Lord, every single one of us will have that experience, Father, to walk in the fullness of, uh, uh, Lord, um, uh, your blessings, Father God. We give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Mm. Okay, so uh, we'll continue. Okay. Sure. So in the last class, we talked about the spiritual realm and the awareness of the spiritual realm. Even though we are people who live in the natural realm, we must understand that um, there are two realms really in which we are functioning. And we could, uh, it's important to understand how some of the laws of the spiritual realm operate. So when we um, follow those those laws, then there is an impact on the natural realm, right? So uh, all that we discussed, we said things like faith or uh, obedience to God's instruction, like giving, all of that, there's a principle behind that and it, it operates. So from the spiritual, our natural realm is impacted our natural circumstances and situations are impacted. So we need to recognize that there is a possibility of this happening and also know how to operate so that we can make that uh, impact very real in the natural realm. Uh, so one portion that um, we left out in the last class is to be aware uh, when we are saying that um, the uh, supernatural realm right uh, exists there are also angels or heavenly hosts um, that who are assigned um, differently right in in the supernatural realm so the bible also teaches us about you know these these angels coming and ministering um, and that's nothing abnormal in the bible so we know there were places where messenger angels were sent you had angel go up to um um mary or an angel you know go up to other people uh, in in scripture and in, like philip just go up to them and uh, give them a message so uh, even in our lives we can have angelic intervention right that's also supernatural isn't it all of this is there in scripture just that when uh, we hear about it we we need a believing heart to receive it and to actually be able to see things manifest right in our own lives so regarding angels uh, the bible teaches us that they are spirits who are sent to assist us or aid us we read about that in hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14 that uh, angels are serving spirits okay and uh, they will come and assist people of god or those who are born again They'll, they'll assist them. But how will they minister? We also have to consider, we said, right, there, there are laws in the spiritual realm. Now we cannot go against the law and expect uh, things to work out. So when it comes to angels, we can't command them around. Right? We can't uh, say, okay, angel, you have to do this or angel, you have to do that. Right? So I, I don't know if you remember, but when we talked about this in some first year subject, uh, <laughs> Mentoring are? Really? Yeah. I only don't remember. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, fine. Sure. Yeah. So, no, the example which I usually use is like, you know how um, we are all so spiritual, 
right so we spiritualize everything so we could even say something like oh my house is a mess but yeah a few angels will come and you know they'll clean it up the angels will fold the clothes or they'll sweep the house but i'm sorry we can't get them to do whatever we want them to do uh, because that's not how they work while they are serving spirits and we expect them to come and uh, serve us in the ministry they move as per the voice of the lord and that's what scripture says so psalm 103 and verse 20 uh, tells us that that they heed the voice of the lord so what will they do they will do according to what god is saying which is why declarations are very powerful why because what is a declaration you're saying what god is saying isn't it so when we declare that um, you know the lord's protection is uh, is uh, around me or uh, the lord intervenes in my situation what am i doing i'm just declaring what god is saying then angels get activated so declarations are a way in which angels can actually get uh, we just use the word activated but it simply means that they have to now obey because that is what god is saying and that's their duty that's how they have been um you know designed and uh, delegated so when we talk about the supernatural realm it's it's huge the many things that exist in the supernatural realm you know you have god god's authority you have the um you know truth of his word and how his word works uh, how faith operates several spiritual dynamics even heavenly hosts um that are part of the the supernatural world but the whole point of discussing these matters is that we as believers um need to see um that overriding i think i used that word in my last class the supernatural overriding the natural okay uh, to be able to believe it and to learn how to walk in it uh these are the key things so believing it uh, we already said that uh, there are a lot of struggles we people are not clear and so believing is hard sometimes um even if we believe that these things are real will it happen in my life there we struggle so believing it is is a challenge and then knowing the laws by which we must operate uh, that also is is something see we may believe but if we are not operating in faith then how can it work how can the mountain be moved because we never operated in faith so there is a right way of engaging also which we must learn okay uh, so this is a little bit about the spiritual realm uh, any any thoughts any questions yeah they come in a human form same like us and just give what we need to give mm. our help and then later when we turn back they won't be there they disappear mm, mm, mm. yeah there are also some videos like that in youtube so mm. is it like when we told them angelic encounter is it like they come in a human form and we mm. have or is it like uh, how they are made mm, mm. okay so see um angelic interventions of your first question was does it happen today right because we hear these stories um so there's nothing in the word of god that says that it's not meant to happen because in the book of acts you see a lot of such manifestations where angels come and in the book of hebrews again the writer says angels are um, ministering spirits that says this option is there okay god works like this also okay if we believe we can see um angels man, you know presenting themselves and doing what god is telling them to do that is one thing second thing is in human form right now, like when we tell them mm. like we will take a human form mm. and then come and interview with the god with the how they are created mm. the yeah they are coming correct so see temporarily angels can take uh 
uh, yeah like perceptibly human form we now we don't know exactly what in the form it seems like a human so that can happen because in the life of abraham there were many angelic visitations they came they ate with abraham or even uh, sodom and gomorrah lot right in the case of lot they came they stayed uh, with lot so yeah they can take you it seems like human appearance also no you don't see such examples no possession like as a spirit no yeah. come and possess no we don't see that yeah yeah Hmm. He went to a certain place called Makapuram. So he, hmm. he the whole uh, village is with thieves only. Hmm. So when he went to preach there, everyone were uh, opposing him. So these everyone these guys planned to kill him. So he was staying in a in a place when he was sleeping. these guys went to kill him so there there will be 12 uh, like mm. uh, soldiers and all they have mm. wings they, they the 12 people can literally see that there's 12 soldiers just uh, surrounding wow. mm. around him so but he can't see the mm. pastor can't see but the people who they after that they came to the pastor and they were telling i i saw some soldiers around you in the night yeah the whole village got uh, mm. transformed okay great great yeah it's possible anand see these stories when we hear these stories um yeah of course you know it, it, like if it's coming from a sincere person whom you can trust it's likely that uh, these things have happened okay so i mean i have a story of my own also but then i don't know uh, whether others might take it as an angelic um, visitation or something but uh, it it's like this is the only time i've seen um okay and what happened was i was traveling from uh, after my studies i was just traveling back home but i made a transit in in one particular place uh, so in that transit actually my bag was not supposed to come with me because i have a whole years luggage like 25 kgs of luggage so uh, when i was making that transit I, i'll just cut a long story short um it was very difficult for me because i had gone to visit i had already planned that visit to my friend's place so i uh, landed in the city in that city i had to go to the bus stop from the bus stop go to another city okay i with my luggage uh yeah all the luggage i imagine when i went to the bus stop it was so steep with steps so there only i struggled like i carried that my laptop bag everything went up to book the ticket some way book the ticket dragged my luggage and then the bus station no is again down like steep lot of steps and this time at least outside they built it with stones but inside the bus station they had built it with this you know metal steps are there right sometimes they just put that thing it's not so strong also like that but a big one going down and very steep i just stood there and i was like jesus i'm alone with this bag how am i going to go down please help me that's all i said the next thing i know is there's a guy he just came he pushed me he took my bag and he he's wearing full white and he's just running down the steps and i ran behind him i was like that's my bag that's my bag like you know don't take my bag and go he just ran down um and i was thinking somebody is taking my bag and running away right in another place so frantically ran behind him went down he went down and my concentration was only on that bag so then i got my bag and he's gone like i don't know disappeared i don't know i really don't you know can't find him. i can't find him but see for me it it is very i can't forget this because i stood there and i prayed i was like lord i'm alone how will i go down i'm just thinking not thinking he's a man fully white okay he comes like huh? how did he look also like i didn't notice a human being a human and being like, wearing um, full white uh, like you know like a um, dhoti and uh, like a kurta yeah like very very loose clothes uh, i see i don't know now people can argue with me and say no it was just a nice you know good samaritan <laughs> who came and helped you maybe i don't know but for me in that moment whatever happened was like 
you know it it really kind of ministered to my spirit uh and yeah finally i took the bus so <laughs> that was my only experience but i don't i've not had any other when i heard this like how there is one person who asked one person for lift he was directing him uh-huh. and he asked him to stop like uh, actually this person uh, he he thought of uh, taking a bike yeah. ride and crashing one lorry or uh, one oh. and committing suicide as he is going on the way uh one person was stopped him and asked for lift mm. and he was taking him all over the place and he take him to exact his house and he told this is that is the house and he showed him oh. his house to go uh-huh. and he get down and when he saw the house and when he looked back nobody was there yeah. yeah possible possible maybe in the city center maybe i don't know what will happen in the city is that when dad was taking him to the street was happening Maybe only four houses in the whole area. Hmm. Uh, there will be taking so many testimonies. Now, yeah, yeah. So many. Yeah, sure. See, it's like in our daily lives. Uh, that's what I mean. We are in two realms, and uh, we know this possibility exists, but then it needs to manifest. No. Yeah. No. the same example we yeah. can be unaware of mm. an angelic visitation that we already had right mm, possible like if we take if it if the visitation has happened in a human form like we might not know we have thought yeah. of them as a just normal human being but we don't know right yeah it can possible possible very possible so i reminded one more full of stories this goes as <laughs> coming yeah so the other story is like my sister was traveling um like her on site thing so she had gone and then she had to go from one city to the other very similar situation so the ticket that she got she got it at such an odd hour that there was nobody in the station um and she had to wait like late hours in the night uh and in the sitting room she was alone so she was very scared and she was like oh god please help and then uh, one lady came in she sat next to her and she started reading the bible so my sister felt a little comfortable like okay this is an older woman she is reading the bible must be a godly person so she just sat there and you know like encouraged my sister and said hey don't worry yeah the next bus will come this and that uh, but she never left till like my sister actually had to leave so in her sense she felt like it was literally an angel don't know if she that lady was really traveling or not but in the night time she was there for all those hours right sitting re- next to her and reading the bible and encouraging and all that in another country so you know i i guess uh, again people can argue and say maybe not but yeah that's up to them uh, but when we are in need god helps us that's all we know <laughs> yeah so okay I'm sorry one more no, last no, no, question okay. like uh... here we are talking about uh, psalms 103 verse 7 mm. angels respond to the word of god and uh, as we are being taught you told like uh, we can't tell everything we have to obey to the law mm. of the spirit and then only like when we about telling this uh, declarations yeah why it is important you told when we keep on telling the declarations angels will start activating mm. like start doing the work of yeah. the word of god yeah so it's like if we are not uh declaring any word are they will just doing nothing resting yeah you're right just so you're right yeah so the other way also is true we may have angels who can help us but when there's no declaration when there's no faith they are not activated they're just like you know unemployed <laughs> maybe standing. that's the way to just standing waiting watching so what can we use them for uh, see it's not that we are using them they have certain duties that god has given them so when we study about angels we see different things like you know uh, warring angels worshiping angels uh, messenger angels so depending on what role god has created them for they'll work in that area right so we just have to make the declarations uh and they get activated sorry 
questions to activate the word of god just use the word of god okay yeah hey i i'll just pause the class if you don't mind i'll just be back give me a moment yeah okay uh, so i'll just say what we were discussing we, basically what we said is in the case of uh, deliverance uh, there will be that they we don't see it yet we can expect angels to be a part of the deliverance because um uh, in the case of daniel we uh, saw how an angel came to war against uh, the principality uh, and similarly deliverance is spiritual warfare so angels will be there to war for us secondly we said that um, praise right so when we engage in praise or worship uh, there is a category of angels who are involved in in worship uh, so you know they uh, could be very much a part of our praise and worship so in these ways uh, there is an engagement or involvement of uh, angels okay so great yeah thank you any anything else uh, about angels just expect yeah expect a god to intervene through angels because it's but normal uh, for us nothing in scripture i think the first question that one of you asked is can we expect today why not we can fine so uh, we can move on to the oh one more yes please <laughs> yeah Sir, uh, is it like the angels were always be present with us or it like it like Hmm. like uh, i'm sorry to use the word but for an example is it like a, a watchman they will always be present with hmm. us like some people the angel yeah hmm. guardian, guardian angel always one to our left and one to our so is like even right now they are present beside me or hmm. <laughs> uh, as we have told here god hmm. have been sent to assist us and uh, they respond to the word of god only when we uh, use the word of god they come they minister mm. and when once it was done they will go but they will always be available to come and help is okay. it like that available or that mm. they are always present with us and just uh, do the job when needed yeah so i think um, there was a concept uh in jewish culture where they believed in the guardian angels okay so uh, now how far in in scripture the bible because there is one verse which i think yeah let me just confirm that to you at you 18 mm -hmm. yeah see so yeah present okay fine so see the verse i was referring to is matthew 18 and uh, verse 10 where in a parable uh, so jesus only is saying this take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones for i say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my father who is in heaven so um, they are angels always see the face of my father who is in heaven so somewhere because of this statement there is a thought that maybe there are guardian angels so again it's more than this we don't have information 1810 yeah 1810 yeah so they may not be guardian angels here hmm what does it say Hmm. Yeah. So this is the warring angel, no? Hmm. Ha. Huh, so see, when we say guardian angel, uh, so in the Jewish culture they had this thought that every person has one, like how he told, like a person with you all the time. They had a concept like that. Now, did Jesus propagate that concept? <coughs> no 
only in that one verse it sounds like because uh, let these don't stop these little children from coming to me because they are angel in heaven but again what uh, prince pointed out angels in heaven so yeah it's different context is different no but why would you call them a guardian angel could just have been a messenger no Yeah. Psalm twenty-two, eleven also says, "For He shall give His angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways." Hmm. Yeah. Okay. See, angels are there; they will guard us. Okay. Uh, but that—that's not what we are uh, arguing against. But is it the same angel who's with you all the time, like an assigned guardian angel for each person? Now that thought. doesn't seem to have a strong basis mm -hmm. from whatever so we are like yeah each angel has a different function hmm so like when we need it in our enemy yeah who knows <laughs> yeah who knows yeah whoever's free go <laughs> maybe i don't know yeah so you want the angel for it there's a very good <laughs> yeah so a lot of questions we don't have accurate answers to these questions okay 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 shall we move on yes uh, so jackin um is say, is also quoting psalm 91 verse 11 talking about uh, angels who will protect or guard uh so same thing jack in the whole discussion was about whether there's one particular angel assigned as uh, each person's guardian angel but to that thought we don't have uh, you know clear scriptures backing us up so yeah we'll leave that thought uh, but we must pray and be open to the ministry of angels especially uh, when you see in the book of acts you find that there were angels who showed up every now and then to either give a message or to guide like peter you find peter in acts 12 he's in the prison and then the angel leads him out so in the ministry or when we are doing god's work or we are living according to god's purposes god does um you know send angels to help us because he also knows that we need angelic help uh, so we can expect Uh, and we can always pray for our ministry especially right so um, that's not something i used to pray for but then once i learned that yes that's a possibility why not say god you know send your angels and you know uh, help us so we can pray that way okay uh, right so uh, the next topic here is about faith Uh, we all know that faith is so foundational uh, as far as our walk with the lord is concerned um and the supernatural manifests only when we are walking in faith so there are a couple of scriptures in our notes um john 11:40 is the time when um, jesus told martha right uh, do not be afraid only believe right only believe you will see the glory of god if you believe sorry i'm quoting some other scripture i guess uh, if you believe you will see the glory of god so how to see the glory of god believe yeah so that is what the life of a disciple is all about believing even our journey starts by believing what are we all called generally believers believers okay so i hope we are believing that's that's what uh, our uh, victories are tied to our believing in god so if you believe you will see the glory of god 
Um, yeah, so we know this thought. But again, the question is, in every situation, do we believe, uh, you know, that God can manifest himself? Now, moving on, there's another uh, scripture, Matthew 17 and verse 20. Uh, could somebody else read it? Matthew 17 and verse 20. Matthew 17 verse hmm. 20. He replied, because you have so little faith, I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Hmm. So if you have faith um, as a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, Right? And even a mountain will move. So what are some key things that we see in this particular verse? Let's just examine it a little more. Okay, so Jesus said, uh, one second. Just go back. Yeah. If you have faith as a mustard seed, which means a little bit of faith, mustard seed faith is to imply even a little bit of faith, you will say that means we put our faith into action. And we talk about this every Sunday in church. If you have faith, you will say, right? Make a declaration of the faith. So faith is in the heart. In our last uh, faith course, we've learned it. Faith is of the heart. Uh, but we need to release it uh, through various ways. One of one very important way is to speak it and declare it. So if you have faith, even a little bit of faith, you will say to this mountain, whatever specific instruction, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. Before this, Jesus talked about unbelief. Right, because of your unbelief. So when, when did this conversation actually come about? Okay. Yeah. Okay, when, this, uh, when did this uh, question come about? Uh, I think it's the time when the disciples tried to cast out demons and they were unsuccessful. And they asked Jesus, what was the reason? So he pointed to faith. The point was, if you believe things are possible, if you believe and you speak, um, it manifests, right? So we know so much about faith, but how many of us really are able to apply it and apply it, you know, maybe you, you could say all the time. So that, that's the thing, because it is available. But to learn to operate in faith is uh, something that we must be committed to. Okay? And it always starts with desire. When we want to see something happen. Um, I always love the example of uh, church planters and you know ministers who, um, who have gone to uh, do a work in a particular place and how they've seen that work grow, because it's not easy. You know, we all know it's just the hardest thing, because you go in there thinking tomorrow you'll have a thriving church, but it's not tomorrow, you know, it may be a couple of years or a couple of decades before you see a small, um, uh, some, you know, leaves and some life uh, after you've sown the seed. So, but what is that one thing that has kept certain ministers to uh, finally see their churches grow and thrive they'll all talk about the strong desire which they had you know that desire drove them to keep having faith in god when times were good when times were bad they didn't let go but they continued desiring and saying god you promised in your word i want to see this happen uh, i know you can do it 
I believe it. I declare that you're, you know, working on my behalf. I declare that my church is growing. And so uh, they applied faith. Okay. Uh, and one of the things that is part of the faith is desire. Now, there is a beautiful example from the life of uh, a mother who wanted her child uh, set free from demonic oppression. So this is there in our, um, uh, which one? Yeah, prayer and intercession. But here in Matthew chapter uh, 15 also, there is an account of a mother who comes to Jesus and she asks him, right? It is her desire. Yeah, Canaanite woman. Yeah, Canaanite woman. It's a desire to see the child set free. But what is the issue in this case? Why is she not eligible? She yeah, she's outside of the covenant. But still, Jesus goes ahead and does the miracle for her. Why do you think that was possible? Faith. Okay. Faith. Uh, think about this. She is a Canaanite woman. But she's operating in faith. And that was the key to get the miracle that she so desired. Okay, And what did Jesus say to her in Matthew 15 and verse 28? He says, O woman, yeah, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. Okay. So when we are desiring... Uh, according to the purposes of God. It's, we, we will continue in faith till we see certain things happen. And that is a quality that we have to develop. Okay, because when, whenever we say, okay, it's okay if it happens, it's okay if it doesn't happen, it's not showing great desire. So when it comes to healing, you know, we, what, what do we tend to do? We just say, if God wants, he'll heal. If he heals, it's okay. If he doesn't heal, it's okay. You know, God is a good God. God is sovereign. Everything is under his control. So what we may tend to do is we put the responsibility on God. So if the person doesn't get healed, it was not God's will. You know, we can just explain with that. We can just justify with that or something else. Okay. Now, I know that uh, sometimes healing doesn't manifest and there can be so many reasons why that happens. But the point that I'm trying to make is, see, faith or prayer or anything that you see in scripture, the way God has designed it, it must operate um, perfectly. So if I apply faith the way Jesus is teaching me, the way this woman went to Jesus, she's outside of the covenant, still she believed. And uh, Jesus even said, oh, we don't give the bread to the dogs. Meaning, he said, you're like, he's using the term dogs. It's so offensive, right? But faith is beyond that. She said, I know you can do this. You have to do it for me. Okay. And that is what impressed Jesus. She's operating in faith. Her desire is pulling. It's making a demand on God and saying, when I know you can do this, I also believe you can do this for me. Please do this for me. She didn't leave him. Faith and desire through faith. Okay. Uh, that is something that we must really keep our hearts on and minds on and learn to flow in it day to day. What are those godly things that we should not let go of? Or even some prayers that we pray, right? We pray uh, very scared prayers. It's as if like, I'll make it more comfortable for you, God, because I know you may not do it, but, you know, so why don't you try doing very broad prayers? <laughs> but prayers of faith are like, yeah, God will do it. Yeah. Done deal. Yeah. Specific. So uh, to operate in faith, yes, let's be aligned to God, hear from God, become more in tune with the word and all, but then some daring prayers have to come out of that. Where we say, yes, God, I know you, know, you are going to use me uh, to impact the nations or uh, I know that um, you will work through me to establish a great work in this city. It takes faith to pray like that, to desire like that and not give up.
you know, when uh, enduring faith to see these things manifest or simple things like um, praying right now for someone says, OK, I have a headache. I have uh, this problem. Applying the faith and saying my desire is this person has to be healed. I have faith that they will be healed. So I command healing in the name of Jesus. I want to see the manifestation of that. Right? So applying faith, operating in faith, training ourselves to do this all the time is a key to seeing the manifestation of the supernatural. Uh, and the supernatural will take place uh, if we are operating in faith. Right? So um, uh, I think we are, the time is up. So did you have any questions or? Yeah, sure. Let's address that. Uh, Pastor, like um, Jesus said, uh, if you have a faith as small as a mustard seed, mm -hmm. you can say to this mountain and all that. Yeah. So And uh, that thing is such a big thing, right? Great thing. And you're having such a small little faith as a mustard seed. Mm. But then like for us, like when we have so much faith, more than a mustard seed, nothing great happens. Like, mm. <laughs> I mean, if you believe like even for a small thing, like it does not happen. Mm -hmm. Like, even for the disciples, like, they were trying to get this boy healed. And they, I mean, they had some little faith, as I would say, right? Mm -hmm, it's not mm -hmm. like they didn't have any faith. Mm -hmm. So why did it not happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah, it, it's just uh, to help us understand. It's like figurative language. Okay. Yeah. So, um, see, Rin, I think God is the right judge of whether that faith is effective or not. So in the case of uh, the disciples who went to heal or deliver the child, uh, in Matthew 17, Jesus said that this unbelief, he actually stated unbelief. So that means that their hearts were filled with unbelief because only God can recognize, right? So Jesus pointed out that there was unbelief. That's why it didn't happen. That is one thing. Second thing is, you know, we are saying we had a lot of faith, but it still didn't happen. Now, there could be many reasons for why things don't happen, even if you're operating in faith. Even that is a possibility. Okay. Uh, but having said that, I think it's only God who is the right judge of how much faith we have. We may think that, oh, my faith is great, but also, does... Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So even if you have little faith, it should work. No, that's the thing what Jesus is saying. If you have little faith, it'll work. Yeah. the worst girl, but we should not have doubt, right? Like, hmm? We should not have doubt, like, yeah. we pray when we tell Jesus to do it, and then we should not have doubt, actually, that's during the faith that's what actually cures the mustard seed. It means, like, pure, like, fully complete, no hmm. doubt and all. Hmm. Even if we have a big faith, but if we are doubting, will God do it? I think it won't work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Reasons why. Yeah. Yeah. See, but talking about um, uh, what do you say? Talking about faith, even a little bit of faith should work. That's the point Jesus is making. That's how it should be. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, see, unbelief will hinder, but again, going back to this thought that uh, faith is of the heart. Okay, so when there is faith in the heart, 
or let's say unbelief is taking over that god can recognize what is in the heart now i may have faith in the heart but in my mind i may have questions or what you're calling as doubts the faith will still work because in the heart god has found faith so just having questions in the mind doesn't mean that you're doubting god you're not yeah okay so we'll delve deeper into it in our next session i'll quickly look at the chat here because uh, nina is saying uh, this is going back to the angel guardian angel discussion uh, in a general way psalm 34 verse 7 says the angel of the lord encamps all around those who fear him is this an angel or jesus since lord is in capital the angel of the lord encamps around okay Okay, so Nina, yeah, just uh, angel of the Lord. So angel, uh, we need to look at that particular word in its language. So I'm just trying to look it up. Please give me a moment. It says angelos or anything else? Psalm 34 verse 7, yeah. Mm, the angel strongs yeah it says messenger of god messenger of god angel uh, it's the word malak okay okay nina please give me some time i'll uh, look into this to give you a proper explanation is that okay Yeah, as far as, okay, sure, thank you. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it is an angel only. It's uh, it's not talking about God. Uh, that's my uh, take on this verse. But uh, let me look up um, thoroughly and then make my final point. Okay, so thank you. Let's close for now. Let's uh, close with a word of prayer. Or Rin, Rin, can you please pray? Jesus, we thank you for this uh, time that we have to get together to know more of your word and to um, uh, clear our doubts. And uh, thank you, Jesus, that, um, that you've given us pastors who can um, answer questions well and clear our doubts. And Lord, uh, we thank you for this time and we submit everything into your hands. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, Rin. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a good day. Thank you.